We live in such a beautiful place, and there's something special that happens every year in March and April. We get visitors from all around the globe. Even locals get excited about this time of year. There's a little something for everyone. And you can hear these guys shouting about it from the harbor. Everyone is flocking to see it. It's a big surprise. Do you think you know what it is? If you're sitting with someone right now, share your guess with them. This week's topic is whales, specifically the gray whale migration. So to start, we're going to watch this awesome video that uh, Kevin from Hello Nature showed, shared with us and it is of a gray whale feeding. So before we get into all the awesome info about the herring spawn and the whale migration and learn all about how the whale we just saw was actually feeding, I need to tell you some things about whales. So today we're gonna talk about what makes a whale a whale. I want to know all the different types of whales and how they eat and what they eat and a little bit about what they look like. Next time, we're going to talk more about the herring spawn and gray whale migration and why we see them every year around March and April. So typically our lessons are going to be K to 3 for the first one and 4 to second, 7 for the second one, but I've made both days appropriate for all ages for this one, so I hope you'll join us for, for next time as well. So first I need to ask you, what makes a mammal a mammal? And I'm pretty high tech over here, so I've made myself a memoji. So when you see a confused Amy memoji, that's when I need your help. And I'm going to get you to answer a question for me. So here's our first one. Can you tell me a characteristic of what makes something a mammal? So if you're sitting with somebody right now, share your answer with the person next to you. What did you think? Did you say they're warm-blooded? So here in these photos, we have an alligator and a walrus. One of these guys is warm-blooded, and one of these guys is cold-blooded. Can you guess which one? If you're watching a friend with a friend, share your answer with them. Did you say the walrus? Alligators are cold-blooded and are therefore not mammals. Okay, let's look at the next one. Mammals have a backbone or vertebrae. So try reaching behind your neck right now and feel down your spine. Do you feel those bones? That's your vertebrae and that means you must be a mammal. Can you guess which one of these is a mammal? We have a skeleton of a horse and a snail. What do you think? Share your answer with the person next to you. It's the horse. Can you see the vertebrae in his back? and his super sweet sunglasses. The little snail, although he has a pretty sweet hard shell, he doesn't have a backbone. The next one is that mammals breathe air. Here we have a little goldfish and a mama and a baby hippo. So tell me, which one of these breathes air? Share your answer with the person next to you. Oh, this one's easy. The hippo breathes air. And even though he can hold his breath for a really, really long time, he's still the air breathing mammal. Okay, can you can you tell that I had fun looking for super cute photos? So the next one is that mammals have hair. So which one of these has hair? The cute little goat or the cute little baby chicks? Think about it. Which one has hair? Oh, it's the little goat. The chicks aren't mammals because they have feathers, not hair. They're going to grow into little chickens. Okay, the last one. Mammals give birth to live young. They do not lay eggs. Um, so they nurse young by producing milk. So think about this one. Uh, do you think that whales 
give birth to live young or do they lay eggs? Or is it the turtle that gives birth to live young or do they lay eggs? What do you think? If you thought whales, you're right. Whales are indeed mammals and they are warm blooded. They have a backbone, they breathe air, they have hair, and they give birth to live babies. Okay, 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 wait a second. And you mean whales have hair? Yep, I know, I had to Google it too. Whales have hair follicles, similar to whiskers on a cat. And usually it falls out shortly after they're born, but they still have hair. Crazy, right? Okay, so we've learned all about what mammals are. And let's talk now about marine mammals. So what does marine mean? It means to be part of or from the sea. So marine mammals live part or all of their lives in the ocean. So here are two marine mammals that we probably won't actually see around here. Narwhals on the left. Oh my gosh, how cute are they? They're usually in warmer climates, so maybe near Florida. And then we've got this polar bear on the right. And by the looks of things, he's going to live farther up north where it's colder. So we want to find out what are some local marine mammals. Um, so if you're sitting next to somebody right now, share your answer. What do you think some local marine mammals are? Did you name some of these? So we've got a very cute uh, sea otter, and then we've got some orcas a humpback whale, and some sea lions. Awesome, nice work everybody. So we figured out that whales are marine mammals. So let's find out some more things about them. Whales can be categorized into one of two groups. Can you tell by this photo what the difference is? So take a second to look and share your answer with the person next to you. So I'm gonna give you a hint. They, they're both smiling at us right now and we can see Inside their mouths, what's the difference? They have different types of teeth. Check out the mouths on these guys. What are the differences that you see in their teeth? Well, this big orca here on the right, on the left, he's got teeth like you and I. Okay, maybe they're a little bit bigger, but he's got teeth. And this, they are part of the group called odontocetes. And if you know French, don is the French word for teeth. Or you might have... Uh, heard it when you go to the dentist, uh, where you go to get your teeth checked. Uh, this other group on the right, they're part of a baleen whale group called Mysticetes. And I've probably said both of these wrong, um, so please don't tell anybody. So, now you're probably thinking, uh, Amy, this guy on the right, uh, those don't look like teeth to me. Okay, you're right. They're not teeth. Baleen is more like a comb or maybe a pasta strainer. Can you imagine eating soup with a comb instead of a spoon? Okay, me either. But this guy does it pretty well. All right, let's find out what's on the menu for these guys. One of these groups of whales eat big things like the fish we see on the right, as well as squid and other marine mammals. The other eats tiny little critters like plankton and krill, which can be smaller than a grain of sand. Which do you think eats which? So let's find out. So first we'll talk about toothed whales, and here are some examples. Have you seen any of these guys before? We have dolphins on the left, and then an orca, and a sperm whale. These whales all have teeth inside their mouths, just like you and I. So I have some local celebrities here. You might know them as Yuki Field School coordinator Carrie and her son Hudson, who are going to help us figure out what toothed whales eat. Here, Carrie and Hudson are holding a sperm whale tooth. Do you think this tooth would do better munching on a nice tasty salmon or a tiny little plankton? What do you think? Share your answer with the person sitting next to you. If you guess that tooth whales like salmon, then you are right. I don't think a big old tooth like that would do very well to chew up a tiny little plankton and krill. So thanks Hudson and Carrie for your help. 
So now we know that toothed whales use their, use their toothy jaws to catch larger prey like squid and fish. Here's Carrie again to show us some of the things that are on the menu for toothed whales, such as large fish, marine mammals, and squid. Thanks, Carrie. Okay, so let's look at some examples of baleen whales, and then we'll figure out what exactly baleen is. Do you know what kind of whales these are? Take a guess and share it with the person next to you. If you guessed a gray whale on the left and a humpback whale on the right, you are right. Okay, so put up your hand if you've heard of the word, the word baleen before today. Wow, that's a lot of you. I'm just kidding, I can't actually see it. I'm just hoping you put your hand up. So take a look at this baleen on the right here. What do you think it looks like? What does it remind you of? To me, it looks like a comb. It also kind of reminds me of a car wash. Both are kind of right, actually, in a way. So baleen is like a pasta strainer. Imagine scooping up some ocean water filled with little tiny plankton and krill cr swimming around. I want you to try this. So take a deep breath and close your mouth so your cheeks are huge and filled with air. Now make the tiniest little hole in your mouth like you were going to whistle and blow out all that air. If you had little critters in your mouth, they likely wouldn't be able to es escape through that tiny little hole, right? Well, baleen acts in the same way. The whale scoops up water with all the little plankton and krill in it, then closes its mouth and blows out. And all the water strains out through the baleen and all the little critters will be left behind, just like pasta in a pasta strainer. Yum. Except think about how big a whale is and how tiny little plankton and krill are. Gray whales have to eat about 2,000 pounds a day of food. That means they spend a lot of their day eating. Well, thanks to Carrie again for helping us to figure out what baleen whales eat. So our options are plankton, on, or sorry, krill on the top, and or bigger fish on the bottom. What do you think? Share your answer with the person next to you. Oh, if you guessed plankton and krill, you're right. Because the baleen is going to catch all these little tiny things, but it wouldn't do a very big good job chowing down on this big salmon. The baleen would probably get bent. One final cameo from our local celebrities, Avon and Hudson, who are modeling this huge baleen from a bowhead whale. Um, a what head whale, Amy? A bowhead whale. Bowhead whales live further north, so we don't actually see them very often here, but what a treat for us to, see, to get to see it. You can imagine how huge this whale must have been if this is a, just a little piece of its mouth. Baleen whales in general are a lot bigger than tooth whales, so it's kind of funny to, that the biggest animals on the planet eat the tiniest little creatures, whereas the whales that are a little bit smaller tend to eat the bigger animals like fish. Okay, I got a question for you. Do you know what the biggest baleen whale is? If you think you know, share your answer with the person next to you. Did you say blue whale? Then you're right. Blue whales are almost 100 feet long and that's bigger, bigger than the biggest dinosaur. I didn't fact check that, so um, you can just assume it's probably right anyway. Okay. Take a look at this picture here. We can see that blue whales on the bottom are the biggest. Humpbacks are kind of in the middle. And orcas, which are toothed whales, are actually the smallest. So it's really neat that the toothed whales, which eat the biggest things, they're actually smaller than most of the baleen whales. And the baleen whales eat the tiniest little thing. Okay, I know what you're thinking. Amy, this is absolutely fascinating, but I thought we were going to learn about whale migration. Right. Okay. Well, thanks for the reminder. And let me ask you this. What kind of whales do we see around Euclid and Tofino in March and April? Do you know? Here's a, a picture to remind you. It's Pacific gray whales. 
Today, almost 24,000 gray whales pass by Tofino and Nukula each spring on their annual migration. We are so lucky to get to see them. So let's talk about gray whales, and we're going to begin by talking about their size. Do you ride the bus to school? Well, picture a whale getting onto the bus with you. Gray whales are about the same length as a school bus. Do you think you would save him a seat? Adults range from about 40 to 50 feet long, and that is the length of a school bus. And they weigh up to 40 tons. Now, I have no idea what 40 tons look like, but Google tells me that it's more than five full-grown African elephants. Whoa, that's pretty heavy. Gray whales don't have noses like you and I. They have two nostrils on top of their head called a blowhole. Can you imagine if a whale had a nose on the front of its head and it had to swim vertically every time it wanted to take a breath? It's a pretty funny picture to think about. So it makes sense that the blowhole is on the top of its head so as it's swimming along, it can take a breath just by swimming near the surface. And because they have two blowholes, the blow from a gray whale kind of looks like a heart shape. So we're going to watch a video in a second here that our friend Kevin at Hello Nature sent us. And I want to mention before I watch this video, the gray whales are known for their curiosity towards boats and thus face threats from vessel strikes and disturbance along their migration route. So we have rules put in place about how close we can get to whales. And these rules differ depending on what type of whale they are. But for gray whales, we can't get closer than 100 meters. And if they are with calves, so with a baby, or in a resting position, so maybe sleeping on the surface, we have to stay 200 meters away. However, if you stop your boat at this distance, 100 or 200 meters, and the whale comes to you, well, this is what can happen. And here is another video of a gray whale blow. Gray whales can stay underwater for up to 30 minutes and can dive down up to 500 feet or 150 meters deep. But when they're feeding, they're usually found in shallow water. What color do you think gray whales are? Gray whales. If you said gray, you're right. Ah, oh, you're so smart. They're dark gray. So this color right here and right here on this blue hole, that's the color they are. But look at how much white and brown they have on them. Those brown things, those are barnacles that like to live on them. Why do you think barnacles like to live on gray whales? Because gray whales move very slowly through the water. Barnacles can tag along for the ride and scoop up nutrients from the water as they swim along. So it's good to note that barnacles don't actually hurt the whale at all. And all the white patches on the barnacle, that's where barnacles have attached themselves to the whale and later fallen off. Check out the difference between these two pictures. The bottom picture is of a humpback whale and the top one is of a gray whale. Do you see the difference? Check out this dorsal fin or the back fin on this humpback. And then check out this tiny little bump on the gray whale. Well, gray whales don't actually have a dorsal fin. Instead, they have this tiny little hump and then a series of little knuckles on their back. Well, that's it for today. We're going to end this lesson with a little intro for Thursday, and that's to ask, why do we see the gray whales here at roughly the same time each year? Well, that has to do with the herring spawn. And every year in March, the herring come into Barkley and Quickwet Sound to spawn. You may have seen the milky green waters that occur from the spawning fish. Gray whales love to feast on herring eggs, so we often see the two at the same time. So here's an awesome video of a gray whale feeding. What an awesome video. So next time, we're going to talk about what exactly they're doing when they come to Euclid and to Fino each month. March. 
what gray whales like to eat, more about their eating behaviors, and we're going to talk about their annual migration and the local herring spawn. So we have a really fun video for you to do at home, and we would love it if you would share with us and your friends from school. We're going to get you to send a postcard to all of your classmates that, are your, that you're missing this week, and they will do the same for you because they're all watching this video too. What a great way to say hi to each other. So we would love to see non-Euclid and Tofino residents join as well. So show us where you're from. Draw your own or use your template, the template that's shown here. And the link will be posted on our Facebook page and on our website under online learning. And you can take a picture of it and post it in the comments for this presentation on our Facebook page. Or you can share it on social media with the hashtag field school at home. So your postcard should include a drawing of your favorite whale. Mine is a gray whale, obviously. And then address it to your class at your school. So my school is Euclid Elementary, but because I've graduated from elementary school, I didn't put a, a class because I go to all of them. But if you are in, let's say, Miss Kinvig's grade one, two class, you could put grade one to Miss Kinvig, and then they would know to send it to that classroom. And then you're going to write a note telling them something that you learned today. Um, so mine, I'm saying, hi everyone at Yuki Elementary, Carrie and I miss you all. Today I learned that we should make a bus stop at the beach so the gray whales can catch a ride to school because they are the length of a school bus. So don't forget to send it to us so we can showcase them on Facebook and in next week's presentation. So see you next time for the second part of this gray whale migration lesson. Thanks for watching.